our spooky friends, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with the Scariest Podcast. Woo! I'm Robin Grace, and this is Adam Diaz, Hello. and we're going to read some stories, I guess. We are. In fact, we're going to be reading your stories, so thank you so much for sending them to all the folks who have submitted them. And for those of you who haven't, there's multiple ways to do so. So, Robin, uh, what do we call the stories we get sent, and how can folks send them to us? So, if you have any cool, I mean, it doesn't have to be cool necessarily, but paranormal, supernatural stories from you, your relatives, your friends, um, could be spiritual, could be hilariously, frighteningly coincidental, um, sleep paralysis, we've done We've done a lot of sleep paralysis, yeah. Um, so, just send us your awesome stories. Yeah, we call them homegrown whores. Did you mention that part? Oh, no. Yeah, we call them homegrown <laughs> whores. It's a fun little thing that we do. And you can email storytime at scarish.com. You can also go to the website, scarish.com, and click on contact us. We have a lot of stories tonight that were sent that way, so we're glad that that way is convenient for you folks, and we appreciate you doing that. You can also tweet at us at scarishpod, message us on Instagram at scarishpodcast, or message us on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash scarishpodcast. But however you would like to do it, whatever's comfortable for you, please do so. And uh, we just want to say thank you to all the folks that have decided to join us for the recording of this because we do record these episodes live every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, yep. the West Coast time. Shout out to Valley Grills who resubscribed for the second month. And the message they put on there is, woo. And I won't scream it way too loud because I know that Robin really, really hates it. Um, but still, thank you so much to all of you who have sent out uh, stories to us. And we're going to start reading, I think, like right now. I'm yep. going to go first. So right now. this first one is from Tatiana, and the subject is The Thing, which is a pretty solid movie with Kurt Russell. And uh, it Who is it about out, the movie? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. I didn't read this yet. I'm just saying oh. The Thing is a movie. And it starts out like this. Hi, Robin and Adam. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm writing in to share a short, maybe not so scary story. So I grew up in Portland, Maine. I was thinking Portland, Oregon, but that is the opposite side of the country. Uh, Portland, Maine, and lived in the suburbs. I lived in a recently built home at the end of a street that sort of looked like it abruptly ended. In parentheses, my guess being the contractors had planned on further developing the land, but instead just pieced out. I think we've all seen places like that where it just seems like the construction crew was like, I right, we're done now. And just left it looking unfinished. Perhaps. There's, I mean, we live in Vegas. There's definitely roads where people were like planning on connecting them. And oh. they're just like, you know what? I'm good. Yeah, there's and so many roads that just don't connect. So, yeah, sometimes you'll be driving and then all of a sudden you're on dirt. And it is just disturbing and uh, very annoying. So, yeah, I understand what you're talking about here. Growing up, living next to this undeveloped land meant that there were super tall trees that surrounded our house that often made my parents worried that a tree would topple onto the house and kill us during a storm, lol. That is a legitimate worry, I think, but also kind of funny that you'd be worried about it. Anyways, my older sister and I would go into the woods. All right, I already don't like where this is going. Would go I mean, into the- <laughs> you asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happens here. Would go into the woods when That's, we were younger. It's just a joke. I'm not serious. Wow. Well, <laughs> just saying, I'm not saying you, you deserve it. But that's what you get. That's what I'm saying. That movie's from that line is from Tag. You guys should watch that movie. It's stupid, but it's funny. All right. My older sister and I would go into the woods when we were younger and explore. Basically, we had a forest all to ourselves. We would walk on decaying trees along the forest floor, and if you walked long enough, there was a small creek. That's pretty cool. Also, there was an old small hunting hut slash house thing that had fallen over from age that we would go to sometimes and scavenge around it. I found a radio one time, and it still worked. That That's pretty cool. That is crazy. <clears throat> okay. Oh, my God. What if the haunt the radio is, like, haunted? Well, and you get, like, ghost calls from people that don't exist? What if it was ghost calls from people or, like, that were frequency? really... Or, like, frequency? They were really nice asking you to finish their incomplete business. There's a, a Robert Downey Jr. movie when he's really, really young before... He like fell off for a little while. That's kind of good where he has like imaginary friends. Wow. Tangent. He has imaginary friends, four of them. When he's a kid, he stops seeing them and then he gets older and then they find out like, oh, we were supposed to like have this kid help us finish our unfinished business. It's kind of cute. Anyways, the next sentence is okay, but getting to the scary part of the story. So I was around seven or eight and my mom had just driven my sister and I home from school. The weather was nice. So I decided to sit on the porch on a swing and chill. I was out there alone for a few minutes when I suddenly felt like I was being watched. Absentmindedly, I looked around. That's a really good word. Absentmindedly, I looked around, not expecting to see anything until I turned around and crouched in the woods, staring at me, maybe 10 or so feet away at the edge of our property, was in between some shrubs, was a large black shape with red glowing eyes. It's the chupacabra. I stared in disbelief, not sure what to make of it. It's hard to distinguish what it can be. Or it's Bigfoot. Since every cryptid has red glowing (laughs) eyes. Uh, I stared in disbelief, 
Not sure what to make of it. At first, my child brain went through the few animals I knew lived in the woods. Bear? Deer? I had no clue. The longer I stared, the more apparent its lack of shape slash definition became. The thing I saw was the darkest and most pure shade of black I've ever seen. So black that it seemed to consume the light around it. That's creepy. It stared at me. It stared back at me before, and in parentheses it says, okay, this is hard to explain. It then seemed just to back away into the woods in long strides, almost bounding away. It took the thing about three quote unquote steps to get out of eye shot. I have no idea how long the interaction was, but thinking back on it, it couldn't have been more than two minutes. I'm not sure what it was, but in that moment, I wasn't scared. I think the thing was just curious, and it didn't mean and it didn't mean to get caught staring. That's kind of funny, where it's like a friend in the woods that just came to like see, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm huge and dark and have red yeah. eyes, I might scare something. Afterwards, I then went inside and told my family, and of course, they didn't believe me, lol. I still consider this to be my only, quote, real paranormal experience, and still tell this story to this day. Hope this wasn't too long, and hope it's scary enough for the podcast, Tatiana. Uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Like yeah. in every way, shape, and form. But I think they're all perfect. And mm-hmm. it's really good. And I really appreciate the fact that you weren't like, this was definitely a monster. But you were convinced and sure that you saw something. Because I think that's like just the right frame of mind to be in. Like, I saw something. This is what I saw. It was creepy. I do find it paranormal. But eh. Like, not sure what it could have been. But still, that's uh, that's really, really effing good. And Solid. If anyone hears that and they're like, oh man, I saw something when I was younger too. Storytime at scarish.com. Write us that email right now. I have someone at work who just started listening to the podcast and uh, they asked me because they, they'd only listened to a couple episodes. They're like, hey, um, how often do you get stuff about sleep paralysis? And I was like, oh, we get it um, a lot. And he's like, I have sleep paralysis like once a month. And I was like, oh, man, you have to send me an email. Like, I need to read this on the show. Tell me all about your experiences. So uh, it's really, really fun when you guys send the stuff in. So thank you for sending that. I appreciate it. What do you think it was? Do you think it was Chupacabra? Or are you just going to go with something from, like, the main region? Mothman. Mothman's not bad. I kind of like that. With the whole it being, like, misty type thing. I don't know what it was. Not all there. I just say Mothman because tangent now fallout 4 <laughs> i made a statue in fallout 4 because there was like a whole mothman event it's pretty cool and so i built this statue at my camp and if you like interact with it it like busts into it like su- yeah into like ghosty looking moths like black shadow stuff and then it comes back together and is like mothman so when i heard like black with red eyes and kind of shadowy no and dark. tangible form mothman right on we'll go with that so we're gonna say it was the mothman you're welcome we figured out your paranormal <laughs> experience for you so fun stuff before we move on into our next story i want to point out that this week we received and I, I guess not this week but this week we'll be reading a very 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 long email it's the longest email we've ever gotten so robin and i decided that we we're gonna chop it in half down the middle and split it <clears throat> and split it so she's gonna start and then I'm going to take over after that, and uh, we'll go from there. So technically, it'll be like we have six emails each. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and jump into that one, and Robin is going to lead out with that one and uh, go for it. All right. So this next email is titled, My Family is Haunted. Which is a really good way to start a it's, really long email. It's uh, I hope it's really crazy. Like, And then chase this person, and this person moved away, but they were still haunted. Uh, As we'll, a side note, we'll find out. Robin was very nice for the show, and she made my coffee for me. Is it good? It is not great. It doesn't taste like coffee. Like I know I take a lot of crap in my coffee, but I think you overdid it a little bit because I don't know what's in it, but I don't taste any coffee at all. It's cream and sugar. Is it just cream and sugar? Yeah. It's it's a lot of it, but thank you. I just wanted to point out that I really do appreciate you making that for me. Thank you for doing the jerk off motion and flinging it in my face. All right. So this email goes. Hello, Adam and Robin. Hello. Hello. I recently started listening to your podcast and am in love. Aw, thank you. Thank you so much. You guys are the only thing that could keep me sane during traffic in Las Vegas. What? So you're, you're in from Las Vegas, Vegas, you say. Uh, and make chores fun. After going through most of the serial murder podcast, uh, I decided to change it a bit. That's where I found you guys. It took me over a month to write this story because honestly, it was one of the most haunting things in my childhood. And in the meanwhile, I visited family and asked them about what they remember. That's some dedication. That right is there. dedication. That's also a very good idea. You guys ask your family yeah. and friends them too. I'm sure they have stories. I, I hope you guys enjoy. My stories are seriously so long. It could probably be a whole episode. Here are 
five plus stories from most of my family. I went back home recently and asked for more. Um, you may be reading this while I am in the Navy. I'm due for boot camp soon. Wow. Thank you for your Thank service. Thank you. Yeah. I will hopefully hear my story after the hell months are over. <laughs> I am super excited on what you think. Adam Pendejo does indeed mean stupid. It means asshole where I'm from. Just saying. It also does mean stupid with certain dialects. I I would like to point out, my brother uh, joined the National Guard. While he was in boot camp, he was allowed like one phone call home a week. And he used to call home, ask for me specifically. We would talk a bunch. And then he would ask me to play some of his favorite music for him over the phone. Because he wasn't allowed to have like an MP3 player. You just triggered that memory for me. So thank you very much for that. Because it's a very good memory. I recently listened to your Christmas episode where you fight with Google Translate trying to find out what Krampus means. That's funny. I mentioned my nieces and nephews. I have nine. I did not name them for privacy reasons. Cool. We respect that. The first story is called The Voice in the Hallway. These stories are going to be intense. They're titles and everything. So this story takes place around the age of 12, uh, around the age where I still loved Scooby-Doo and was a complete dork. I'm turning 30 this year, and I still love Scooby-Doo. I'll sing the whole fucking Scooby-Doo song right yeah, now. Yeah, but you don't I even love... know songs that uh, my sister and I sing. Like, like... Zaboomafoo? No, Who no, no. That? From Scooby-Doo. Oh, yeah. I don't know your Scooby-Doo. You're talking about the movies. I'm talking about the cartoons, man. Like, I'm a purist. You watch Buffy the show. I watch Do Buffy know... the movie. Anyway, I've always been a morning person, even at the age of 12. You're better than me because <laughs> I cannot wake up to save my life. I had three other siblings and a cousin that stayed with us in a four-bedroom home, so that's seven of us. Wow. It's a lot in the house. We were poor. My parents had migrated from Mexico and both worked long hours, so they were hardly ever home, and we all shared bedrooms until everyone moved out. I woke up and had been listening to my parents get ready to leave for the day when I finally got up and went straight into my parents' bedroom. The room was tucked in to the very corner of the home with a bathroom inside. Well, you had your own bathroom. It's kind of fancy. That's kind of nice, yeah. It had a large closet and a decent-sized window. I snuck into my parents' room in the darkness. I always had the habit of leaving the lights off in the hallway as I snuck into their room. You're no Tom Bodette. He'll leave the light on for you. Oh, my goodness. Mostly, Pretty proud of that joke. I'm not going to lie. Mostly so my siblings would not wake up because as soon as they detected movement, they would wake up and all hell would break loose. That's funny. I walked into my parents' room. The bathroom light was on, as it usually was. I went in and used the bathroom. My mom would leave the light on for me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you see? It knew, I knew it was going to show up. My mom would leave the light on for me because she knew that I would go in there to get ready since my dresser was still in there. My sister's room was a little crammed due to my cousin and sister taking up most of the space. This tends to be what happens with siblings, I think. Uh, I get out of the bathroom and put on my uniform for school. That's kind of cool. I kind of miss school uniforms. Really? Yeah. That's why I think I kind of was happy that I was going to be going to a place that had like specific types of clothes you could wear. Because it limited the options so I wouldn't wake up and just stare at my closet like, what the F am I going to wear today? I, I, I don't know if that makes any sense. No, 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 it does. Okay, cool. I stood in front of my mom's piece of furniture just a few feet away from the hallway. It had double doors with mirrors on them at the top half and drawers at the bottom half. So uh, like an armoire. Is that what they're called? That's what it sounds like, yeah. yeah. A wardrobe, perhaps? Um, I bet there's a lion and a witch behind there. I was wondering if you were going to take the joke or if I was going to um, have to do it. <laughs> I remember tucking in my shirt for a while trying to make it absolutely perfect. This was me every morning and still me now. Military makes sense. That does make sense. Uh, Straight gig line, bro. Straight gig line. It's your buttons have to match your belt. It has to match your fly. That's oh. your gig line. Okay. I don't G know if that's what they still giggity, call it. Giggity, giggity, goo. I hate you so much. As I, as I look at myself, I hear my name being called in a whisper very lightly from the dark hallway. Lucy. It emphasized every character in my name, and I stared into the dark hallway in confusion. I had never experienced anything this scary before i was wondering where in the hell my brother was hiding in order to pull off this trick i hear uh, uh, my name being whispered again just a little louder than the last i look at the hallway and yell at my brother mm -hmm. ricky you're not scaring me kicking the door shut in a hard slam stupid ricky <laughs> Anyone who's ever yelled at their sibling, you're not scaring me, was getting scared by their sibling. <laughs> Just saying. Kick the door shut, said stupid Ricky. I think to myself in anger. My brother was always playing pranks on me. I sighed in relief after the door was shut, knowing surely he was not in the room. There was no way. So I continued to tuck in my shirt to perfection. I hear my name being whispered again, but even closer. <sighs> 
almost as if it was right next to me, clearly not on the other side of the door. It was taunting me. I couldn't define the gender or if it was old or younger. It was simply whispering. I turned, looked at the door, and my mouth opened. My blood began to boil. My face was hot. My heart dropped to my stomach and began to beat faster than ever. I stared at the door and cocked my head, realizing I just yelled at something that was not my brother and yelled out it was not scaring me. I felt its presence. I could not see it, but it was there. It felt as though it was getting closer to me. Unable to see it, I knew something was there. Frozen, I stared at the door for probably a few minutes, waiting for something to appear. Then I hear Lucy yet again. Tears started dripping from my face. Surely I thought I was going to die right there. I swallowed hard and gathered the strength to slowly step away from the door, away from the thing I couldn't see, and sit on the corner of my parents' bed, stared at the door, and as the whispers grew louder and creeped up to my ears, I slowly stepped to the corner of the bed with tears still running down my face. In my mind, I imagined an invisible demon or something that wasn't of this world but was invisible. I saw nothing out of the ordinary, sure that this was literally the way I was going to die from an mm -hmm. entity calling my name that I could not see ready to attack me. I sat on the corner of the bed, eventually lifting my legs, smart move, and putting them on the bed and slowly scooted back to the headboard. I reached behind me and grabbed my mom's radio sitting behind me. I put the volume up and turned the radio on and nothing, not even static came out of the damn thing, only silence. I stared into the empty room when I looked at the bathroom, which had the door cracked open and the light was off. When I realized there was heavy breathing coming from somewhere, this was when I realized I was stuck in the room and about to be possessed. What? It, Get the fuck out of here. It breathed what I would have imagined to be a lion or a giant animal would breathe like. You said lion or a witch, so I'm just saying. Like, you kind of <laughs> predicted that. Uh, ready to jump, almost growling, when all of a sudden I hear my brother's door creak open, when flight or fight mode kicked in and I flew... I had two seconds to get to him before he walked into the bathroom, so I darted at him faster than the thing could whisper my name again. In tears, I asked, Ricky, were you calling my name? Tell me you were calling my name. Squeezing his shirt, he looked at me with his sleepy eyes and said, what? No, get away from me. Disgusted, I was touching him. I think it's funny that Ricky was the one that might have been screaming, Lucy. <laughs> And someone over in the in the YouTube chat said, it was Anna said, Lucy, I'm home. Oh, my God. Which is kind of funny. And slowly pushed me away from him, as an older brother in his teens would do, especially at 5.30 a.m. As he slowly shut the door to the bathroom, I knew I did not want to be in the, do the hallway where that thing had initially been calling my name. So I ran as fast as a cat, jumped in, which is pretty fast. Our cat runs like she darts around the house so fast. Uh, jumped into my sister and cousin's bed, yelling my sister's name and shaking her awake. Daisy, wake up. Something was calling my name. Something was calling me. <laughs> my cousin and sister looked at me like they had seen a ghost, but told me I was hearing things and that I had imagined it all. Like an older sister would say to her sibling. It was probably the first time she had hugged me in ages. I remember my cousin Aww. and sister had this look on their face that I will never forget. My sister told me to go to school, which I did, but I never forgot what happened. This was only the beginning of the hauntings, as later I learned most of my sisters had played with witchcraft or played the Ouija board in our house or and friends' houses. there's the witch. This story should have been called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh Just God. saying. I had always been a good girl, of course, until I became a teenager, but I said, fuck this house and moved out at 19 with my sister, who's evil. Wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> And mean. Which sister? Hopefully it wasn't the one that was super nice to you just now. Uh, this next story is called My Sister is Evil. In parentheses, not kidding. Wow. <laughs> Carmen was the oldest of all of us. And since we were younger, stayed away from her. Uh, she has always been a sour patch kid. So sour and then sweet or just sour with no remorse. That's funny. Until recently, I have decided she's just evil. I love my sister still with all her evilness. My family is all sorts of fucked up. She puts the icing on top. <laughs> she has always been someone to look up to besides the fact she's a mean person. <laughs> she has a Mean doesn't always necessarily mean bad person. Just saying. She has a career, a house, a paid off car, graduated from college. I always looked up to her growing up besides her evilness. <laughs> First off, my sister was evil since we were little. She... <laughs> 
It's just so funny. She would sit all my sisters and fart on them when she was gassy. This was just the beginning. <laughs> when she was in high school or early college, something changed and she began to become a chicken. I remember listening to my sisters say she was playing a game with a little girl that her friends had showed her and she didn't believe it was real. I tried to Google this game, but I almost shit bricks just looking up scary games with ghost girls. There are plenty to choose from. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We've I, covered some of them. I love researching paranormal games because they're just so crazy where you're just like, why would you ever do this? And I'm such a rules guy that whenever I hear the rules of the paranormal games and they're incomplete, I'm like, whoa, I have so many questions that I need answered. I'm not participating in this unless I know. It involved her summoning a little girl and the little girl would do something for her. But my sister would have to put flowers on her grave within a week or something. She summoned the ghost girl and asked her to do something when the little girl complied. My sister was so afraid that she refused to put flowers on the little girl's grave, thinking it was just an evil game. If you're playing a game and you're summoning someone, why would you do that, man? Yeah, that, no. You gotta, if you know it happened and she did that thing you wanted her to do, then you go and you do it because you know you have to. You know what I mean? You pay the price. You, You don't summon someone. I mean, if the person was alive, you wouldn't have them come over under the promise that if they did something, you do something. And then when they did it, be like, never mind. I was just kidding. Like, that person would obviously be upset. And if they're dead and a spirit, it's just opening up so many bad doors. After a week or so had passed, the little girl began to become evil. It at one point lifted my sister's bed from the floor while she was on it. My mom jumped onto the bed with her and they held each other until it stopped. My sister continued to hear stuff, but eventually started sleeping with a fan to tune the sounds out. <laughs> when I was 19... Hashtag team fan. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to work that in wherever I can. When I was 19, I moved out with her, but sometimes I wonder if she's such a bitch because of the little girl that haunts her. I recently stayed at her house, which she's had for about two years. My boyfriend usually comes with me because she's less mean in front of strangers, but this time I made the trip alone. When I turned off the light, the room was darker than I remember, and I could feel something staring at me. When I woke up in the middle of the night, I woke up in a sweat and my heart beating fast. I would not had a nightmare and had remembered my dream about a dog. I heard thuds all night and even walking in the hallway. When I explained this to my sister, her whole attitude towards me changed and went from nice to evil again. Maybe because she was upset, I told her I heard noises and thought I was trying to scare her. I told my niece, who's 15, about it, and she told me she was terrified of the same room as well and had heard and felt the same thing, too. I think it's still the little girl who she summoned and never put to rest. That's crazy. That's super crazy. Like, why would you not put them to rest if you summon them? Like, don't bring something forth unless you're going to follow through. I'm looking over at YouTube chat. This is going to make the episode. Just saying. Anna said, rule number one of dealing with summonings, don't summon things. Rule number two, don't break a promise. I think those are pretty good rules. I'm just saying. So, yeah. Before we move on to the next half of that email, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what's creepy? The Winchester Mystery House. And on June 9th (laughs) at 12 p.m., which is noon, we're going to be there taking the tour. So, we would like you to join us. Go over to winchestermysteryhouse.com and get your tickets. It's the regular tour. I think it's $39 on the dot, maybe with some fees or whatever tossed in. So, please go do that. And uh, for those of you who may want to know, the Keep on Creeping on mug is over there at Teespring. Robin has located it. We had a question about that during the live episode. We have a bunch of merch at all of our stores. You can go check them out. We would appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to toss that out there. So now I will move on into the second half of this email. And you read story one and story two. Am I correct in that statement, Robin? Yes, sir, boob. All right. So I'm going to scroll down to story three. We're going to see what it's titled. And then I'm just going to keep on going. And number three is The Woman in the Window and My Brother. And it starts out like this. Before I was staying in my sister's room with my cousin, my brother shared the room with them. We had a family friend named Joanna, J-O-H-A-N-N-A, so I'm pretty sure I said it right. Quickly, uh, Zwazels has redeemed Ask a Question, which you can do if you watch us live on the air, and we will read the questions while we're going through these things. It's a serious question. If you, Adam, and Robin discovered you legit had an active ghost, would you try to get rid of it? If it's everything that's happened so far that's not really ghosty, I'd be like, eh, whatevs. Honestly, yeah, I think it comes down to the activity. If it was, like, tormented and wanting to cross over, I I think I would, like, want to help it do that. But if it was just like a, yo, I live here, I make your lights flicker every now and then because I'm really bored, 
I would just be like all about cohabitation. But if it was something that was like vicious or disturbing or dangerous, then I'd probably want to get rid of it. So there you go. There's your answer. Uh, I'm going to get back to this email. We had a family friend named Joanna uh, that everyone loved, but also dreaded being around. That's kind of funny because that's not two things that you think would go hand in hand. My brother would wake up to someone knocking in her shape. There would be someone in the window holding our cat and petting it, waiting for my sister to come out. When my brother what? would wake my sister, she would look out the window and see no one. At one point, this happened so many times that once we did call the cops, but no evidence of a break-in in the yard was found. My brother saw the most fucked up shit. Once he was laying on my parents' bed when he watched the face of something come out of the wall nope. no. and then go back to normal. Yeah, no. He once heard his name being called out after trying to spy on what my parents were talking about, which he was doing with a friend. His friend rolled into a ball and pulled the blanket over himself, and my brother listened to his name being called in confusion. Maybe it was the same thing that called my name. I definitely think those two threads are connected. <clears throat> Once we were sitting and watching TV in the living room, we hate each other enough to sit on separate couches. Mine faced the TV in the wall. His was closer to the kitchen where you can see the sliding doors and the TV. He said to me, Lucy, don't move. There is something staring at us through the kitchen doors. As what? always, I thought he was trying to scare me, but to this day, he said the story was true. When I moved to check it out, he said it ran away. It looked really strange and was tall and had very long arms and strange hands, according to my brother. It's Slender Man. It sounds something like that. I still think my brother is full of shit on this one. Maybe it was the demon that possessed him because he was eventually sent to prison for a crime I won't speak of for almost 20 years. Holy shit. My other evil sister is the number four story. The It says, my other sister is also a little evil. When she was younger, she did meth in one of the rooms in the house, which I blamed for years for all the hallucinations we saw. Wow. Later, I realized the timeline doesn't add up. And I don't think meth kind of hangs out <laughs> and gives hallucinations to other people after the fact or else there wouldn't really be a return market for it. She did recover and is now a little less mean, kind of. But the haunting started before she was using, so did she also get possessed? Who knows? Anyways, my sister did play with the Ouija board when she was a teenager uh, or early 20s. Her story reminded me never to play the Ouija board. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. She told me about a time when she played with some friends and nothing too crazy happened while playing. But when she was going home, she felt something follow her and her friend. Her friend eventually parted ways. When she was close to her house, she turned around. She saw a man in a black shadow following her. It followed her all the way home. It wasn't a man, but a shadow man. I never bothered to ask more questions. I live in Vegas, and I brought her and her kids back with me when I went to visit my family for the last time before I left for boot camp. Uh, before I leave for boot camp. I was supposed to come home, but my nephews convinced me to stay with them in their two-bedroom hotel at the Stratosphere Hotel. It was their first time there. My niece and nephews are obsessed with everything scary. They now live in the house we lived in when we were kids. What? Oh, those poor kids. So I, does stuff still happen? Uh, probably if they're obsessed with everything scary. My niece suggested we watch scary stuff, so I pulled up Instagram thinking it wouldn't be scary and simply searched hashtag scary. Oh my gosh. I was wrong. Really? I saw a bunch of fucked up shit for about two minutes before I decided this was not a good idea. To make it up to her, we watch, which is funny because when we do our hashtags, I always do hashtag scary ish. I don't think I ever use hashtag scary. I don't do hashtag scary. That's funny. Because we're, I, I do like scary ish and then I do like comedy because we're not a scary podcast. We're not a horror podcast yeah. for sure. Sometimes I do stuff that is really scary, but it's mainly because I'm trying to freak out Robin to elicit that reaction because that stuff's funny. All right, gonna keep going. To make it up to her, we watched cat and puppy videos before bed. My niece passed out and so did everyone. As I started to drift off, I heard scratching on the bedpost. When I rose to wake up, I heard it again. I listened for the third scratch, by only, but only snoring came from my nephews on the other side of the room, so I kind of passed out. At about 3 a.m., someone called the room. Nope, no. My sister nope. answered. They told her that we had requested a cleaning and that they had been knocking for a while. She explained to them we didn't need room service and we went back to bed. When she went into the bathroom, she heard me talking uh, to someone in a whisper in my sleep. No, 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 no. I remember what? being slightly awake at this time, waiting for her to come back to bed. 
I don't know who she heard whispering to me, but it was not me because I clearly remember being awake awaiting for her return. That is super creepy not going to the stratosphere. Yeah, no. (laughs) Moving on to the fifth story. Mom's gnomes and knocking on the walls. My mom made me sleep in my parents' bed till I was about 10 years old. In parentheses, I did not have a choice. I remember waking up to things jumping on the bed that I could not see, but I would never be afraid because my parents were right next to me. I remember I once woke up. How do they not wake up? That's a really good question right there. They're probably too tired from being adults and having a bunch of kids. Well, yeah. Plus, I feel like kids do experience things more than adults do. Do. Yeah, and and they did explicitly state that their parents were like really hard working and working late hours. So I'm I'm they are probably just too exhausted to even experience a haunting. Like your dad. Yeah, just like my dad. Like tornado, huh? Let me die. Otherwise, I have to wake up and go to work to get the hell out of my room. All right, <laughs> getting back to the email. Jeebus. <laughs> I remember waking up to things jumping on the bed. Parents right next to you. I remember I once woke up and there was something underneath the cover the size of a rat jumping closer to me. Nope, no. When it reached no. my legs, I screamed and pulled the covers off, but there was nothing there. It was a there. spider. <laughs> In this time, my mama hates you. My mom would feel what she calls gnomes in Spanish. Uh, duendes. I don't think I'm saying that right. Jumping on the bed. She said there was a witch that put a curse on our family. Shut the front door. And that is why we would see stuff. But I never believed her until I literally, I saw literally a giant owl watching me one night while running at the park and thought maybe my mom was was onto something. Yeah, it might have been. Holy shit. Uh, I went to visit her recently and I took her, uh, I took her to Monday chemo appointments. Oh, that's so sad. I told her I had been hearing things at my sister's house and was unable to sleep the previous nights. As she started to pass out, she told me about the time she stopped buying used things. She loved to go thrift to thrift stores, but she had brought a she had bought a pair of angels a few years back and they had caused her trouble. She told me she had them next to the window when she noticed the curtain would be open after closing them. After going to close them, she would again see them open again and after some time they started to sway as if there were nope. things moving them no. from underneath nope. where she had placed the angels. No. She eventually did get scared <laughs> and placed them in the trash where she accidentally broke them and never saw anything move again. I don't think I would accidentally break these things while placing them in the trash. I think I would purposely break these things while putting them in the yeah. trash. No, thanks. When my dad kicked me off the bed and onto the floor, I would hear scratching in the closet. I would crawl to my mom in the middle of the night and tell her something was in the closet when she would say, quote, It's just the cat, Miha. Go to sleep. But the cat would never come out of the closet, although it would make me feel better. When I got older, I would hear knocking on the walls all the time, thinking it was my dad. In parentheses, this is what he would do from all the rooms if he needed something. That's such a dad thing to do, just knock on the rooms like, someone come help me. Uh, I would go to him and ask him for what he needed, easily angered. If it wasn't him, he would yell and say he wasn't knocking. P.S. I remember going to a graveyard at night as a teenager in El Paso with my cousins and taking pictures. P.S. Don't do it. You will see things creepy as shit and will burn all the photos and your camera in fear. Jeebus. I hope those are enough stories to hear in here for you guys. I hope it wasn't too long and look forward to them being shared. Uh, It was long, but not too long. If it is way too long, we'll just make it not long. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Like. This was a really long email. We chopped it in half. If you yep. send a longer email, we'll chop it into the thirds. Like, we want you to share your stories with us, and we appreciate every single one of them. And some of those are really, really, really effing creepy. So thank you so much for sharing those. And I know yeah, a lot of times so people are reserved because they kind of don't want to air out their family's dirty laundry. But, like, changing all the names and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, and on top of that, I think it's really funny that, like, some people are afraid to air out their family's dirty laundry, and some people are like, my, my sister's, sister's a bitch. My sister's <laughs> evil. Like, she's a bitch. Like, that just tickles my funny bone because I just love – I love that sort of honesty with it because it's like if you can be honest about your family that way, it lends a credibility to whatever you're going to tell me next. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. We definitely really, really appreciated it. So this next email is titled – I almost sharded my pants. <laughs> That's a really good title. Hi, Robert and Aaron. JK, Robin and Adam. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was like, oh, we're, we're back on those where we have the wrong names yet. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I've been listening since episode one. Woot, woot. Your jokes, movie references, and chemistry on the pod are top notch, I'd say. I'm the one who's more active on the Instagram since I don't have Twitter or Facebook. Right on. Um, at the Sarah G. M-O-Z. I want to start a podcast with me and my siblings, but we're not sure of our theme. I mean, look at Mabim Bam or whatever, right? 
I mean, their theme is pretty specific. Oh, is it? Yeah, they read Yahoo Answers and other like places where people ask stupid That's questions, it? and then they That's give their them advice. entire podcast. Yeah, because people ask some really stupid shit, and it's just like it's a never-ending supply of stupidity to make fun of, and it's so so funny. Well, there's an idea. There you go. You. I've always wanted to send in my stories, but never got around to it until Adam insisted to just do it. Insert Shia LaBeouf meme here. Just do it. I've never seen that video. Yeah, he's in front of a green screen so that you can like Photoshop him into a bunch. Did he of do it on stuff. purpose? I'm sure he did it on purpose. Yeah, but All it's right. uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, I'm 28 years old, the eldest of five siblings, and live in LA. Here's my story of the time I thought I was going to die of fright at work. I work in Pasadena for an orthopedic office. Sports injuries, old people aches, broken bones, back problems, etc. Our department is located by the metro station, and our department is specifically located away from the main building, off in a side suite. They located us off to a side suite because there was no room for us in the main building. Rude. I mean, that'll happen Um, before you rent out a brand new full building. Like, sometimes you get put in, like, a temporary spot. So I know a lot of people what's happened to. I've, I've never had it happen to me. So Well, it says they'd rather use the main building room for more patient rooms. <laughs> more patients, more money. Mo money, mo problems. I hate you. I that's knew you were going That's there. in the email. Is it? Oh, yes. my God. You predicted Robin me. humor. You're welcome. Uh, anywho, I have always had the early shift, 6 a.m. to 2.30. So every morning is really dark. There are only four people in this suite, and they don't clock in until 8 a.m., so I'm all alone. I've never had any paranormal experiences, but I like to hear stories and make my own assumptions. Once you walk into my suite, there are only five cubicle stations. The cubicle walls are high, around four and a half feet. All right. Once you're in your station, it's pretty difficult to see who's walking towards you or who walks in. You can only tell by the sound of footsteps or the sound of the door opening. You would have to stand or walk out of your station to see anything. There was only one door and big windows that didn't open. That's frightening. Mm -hmm. I loved sitting in that side suite because you had your own cubicle. You were secluded from the main building, so if any management walked in, you'd need a key or to knock to get in. No one from the main building bothered you because you were too lazy, because they were too lazy to walk over. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, it, it's kind of like me at work because there's like one half of the building that has management and one half that has the rest of us. And I get to sit in my own cube and the walls are like eight feet tall. So no one sees what you're doing in your cube. Not only is, not only does no one see, but no one knows if you're in your cube at all. So Yeah, that's a problem too. <laughs> It works out since I dislike human interaction. JK, but not really. Someone after my own heart. I was going to say, I (laughs) empathize with that. uh, If I could, I'd put a curtain on my opening of my cube because no people. I took a disc Um, assessment today. I don't know if anyone out there has taken it for your work. Is it's that where, where they, you find out if you're like introvert, extrovert, kind all that of, stuff? But it's like there's like four specific like categories like D, I, S, C. Like I forget what they're like specifically oh, called. Oh, DISC is different than the one I'm used to where it's like I, F, J or what? I, I, P, J. Yeah, but like, like with this thing and you can do them for free. Like you can go to like TonyRobbins.com slash DISC. I don't know why I mock that. It's just where you go um, <laughs> because they don't sponsor us and I'm giving them like credit. But anyways, took this at work. And uh, my results came back, and it was the first time I've taken one where it's like, here's what you are when you're being watched or you're at work. Here's what you really are. What? And, like, everyone in the meeting was, like, almost the exact opposite of how they were at work. And I thought it was so funny. And, like, my results were basically, like, I'm very analytical. I'm very soft-spoken. And then it's like, when you're not at work, it's like, you're very outgoing. Like, it's like, yeah, dude, like, I'm on a podcast. It's like, I'm not not analytical. I just don't feel like I need to keep my mouth shut because I don't want to talk to another human being. And starting another social interaction will drive me insane. I think I'm the same at work as I am at, in my real life. I don't like to interact too much. There's the people that I like, and I'll go and I'll talk to them, and I'll hang out in the cube for longer than I should. But when i'm out too it's the same thing it's like the people that i like when we hang out we hang out and we play board games and we do all this stuff um but then i like to hang out by myself sometimes too when i'm at work and i just have a lot of tasks to do i'm like it's like when people ask us like hey do you guys play video games like yes we love video games and like we should play i'm always like we absolutely should and then what happens we never play anything because we have (laughs) so much stuff to do and robin plays by herself but it's just like we have so much stuff to do and that's how i am at work like if i have stuff to do i'm like it's not that I dislike anyone. It's just that, like, I prefer to get my work done over human interaction. 
I was playing Overwatch recently and they have the like free for all where it's like a battle royale thing. Everyone kills everyone else. And my sister likes to play. So she's like, well, do you want to play Overwatch together? I'm like, yeah, but I want to play the battle royale mode so that I can, I mean, just kill other people because you can't play that mode when you're in a party with someone else. Because you're killing each other. So Because you're, you're killing each other. So I'm just like, yeah, let's play together, but not together. <laughs> like, let's be in the same party so we can talk, but we're not going to be in the same game because I want to kill. Uh, anyway, back to the story and the description of her office. So people too lazy to walk over, which is good. And most importantly, you are next to a Starbucks. So shout out to Caffeine. That's what the email says. That's funny. Uh, I had two coffees today. This is my third coffee. (laughs) I'm on my second, so I'm not Um, nearly on your level, but I'm pretty close. Get on my level. Uh, So it was dark every morning. There was also a lot of homeless people in the area because a shelter was a block away, and it's the metro station. We did share a side bathroom with the sheriffs, so this was kind of comforting in the sense that law enforcement was always there to patrol the area. There was always sketchy drug deals between the homeless people that would hang around the area. We and the sheriffs only had the key, so it wasn't open to the public, but let me tell you, it might as well have been because those sheriffs always left the restroom so damn dirty. They got people to bust, I guess. They're like, <laughs> they can't wipe their ass wa- or flush yeah. the toilet. That's gross. Uh, yeah, nasty. Wash your hands. You get typhoid. <laughs> yeah, that's how typhoid spreads. <laughs> there are so many stories I can share just on what I saw from the homeless people that were obviously on something. For example, some dude pulled his dong out and was showing the people walking by. A homeless lady had a big pet rat that she carried around. Hashtag gross. <laughs> okay. Well, some pet rats are cute. Okay, back to my story. I mean, all pet rats are cute, but like wild rats are the ones you got to be scared of. Anyway. Because they have the plague. And typhoid. No, they don't. Animals don't carry typhoid. (laughs) Back to my story. Every morning I would clock in, settle in and start working. Sometimes I would listen to my playlist or listen to you guys. But honestly, I can't listen to you guys alone because I start getting paranoid and catch myself looking over my shoulder and shit. When I was alone for the first two hours of my shift, I'd randomly hear shuffling of papers or faint clicks of the keyboard as if someone were typing, even a slight roll of an office chair. I'm initially an Adam, aka a skeptic, and try to rationalize. Well, thank you. I would always write it off as outside noise or building noises in order to not freak out. This one particular day, I came in, turned on one office light, and went to my station. Half asleep, I start to power on my computer and open the programs. All of a sudden, I hear the rolling noise start to make its way from the farthest end of the room down towards me. I just imagine someone just rolling the chair super fast. I'd freak out, dude. It sounded like someone was sitting on one of the office chairs and the chair was rolling towards my station. Please note, I sat at the opposite end from where the rolling noise was coming from. My heart froze in fear, and I thought, that's it, I'm dying here at work. As the noise rolled closer and closer, I don't know what I was thinking, but I peeked my head out of my cubicle to see what was about to kill me. I saw nothing, but still heard the noise get louder and louder. Then the noise passed me and sounded like it was rolling past my cubicle. I then realized that it was someone walking outside, rolling something very close to my windows and door. That's so funny. I run to the window and peek out, and sure enough, it was a freaking dude with a big, loud-ass roller luggage. <laughs> I like how you not only triggered, but you triggered into, like, this is how I die, and it's just some dude outside pulling his bag. We That's are so located good. right next to the metro loading station, so we get all kinds of people every day. I felt like such a paranoid dumbass. I had to check my scrub pants to see if I'd sharded in them. I was so scared. Initially, I froze in fear and then was even more scared when I didn't see anything but heard the rolling noise grow louder and louder. The mind is a powerful thing, my dudes. (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed my not-so-paranormal experience, but definitely a funny experience. Please keep on creeping on and gotta share another story from my coworker who actually experienced something in that room that was hella creepy. I just want to ask him for details. Also, my grandma has this one paranormal experience that she had as a little girl in Mexico, but I need to ask her details as well so I can do the story just sorry if i went into too much detail and thanks for making me forever paranoid love you guys peace and love sarah g thank you for sending that in that's yeah, really thank you really so good much. i love 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 the funny one yeah where it's, it's like just... this is what i thought it was because and then this is what it actually but it's was. so human to experience something like that if it were me on on some fridays at work 
everyone else leaves at 3.30 and I'm still there till 4.30. So it's the office is absolutely empty and you every little tiny noise echoes through the building. And so you're you're like, who else is here? Because I in the area that I'm in, it's just me when everyone leaves. And like maybe Cody is like four cubes down, but it's it's so quiet. And so any little thing, if I started hearing a chair rolling by really loud, really fast, I wouldn't stick my head out of there. I would just like headphones in, don't look up in case it's one of those things where it's like if you make eye contact, it murders you. I would just look around. I'd just look around and be like, what's making that noise? Like very like nonchalant. Not like I'm trying to hide it, but not like I'm like super scared of it. I would just look around and try. Even if I was scared, I'd try and manage my fear to just find out what it was because I don't want to overreact. My coworkers have started doing things to notify me that they're coming. Because you freak out about because everything. Because I freak out. <laughs> I literally like try and stomp my way towards Robin if I'm going to like come up on her and she might not notice me. And no matter what I do, if she doesn't turn around to see that I'm coming, I give like stomp, 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 burp, sneeze. I'm like, hey, as soon as I say hey, she's like, ah! every freaking time. And I'm always just like, I was the noisiest human being in the world on my way to you. And she's always just like, you're a ninja. And I'm just like, oh, Yeah, thanks. everyone's a ninja. But yeah, that was really, really good. Right now, what's going on at my work is uh, all of the elevators like have like a probably a 5% chance that they'll malfunction while you're in them. And someone at work got stuck in an elevator for 45 minutes. And I was like, if that happens to me, and everyone talked about it, of course. As soon as it happened, everyone's like, what will you What will you do when it happens? And I was just like, I'm going to lay down and go to sleep. Because if I have 45 minutes and there's nothing else I can do and the cell phones don't work in those elevators, it's officially nap time for Adam. Like, I'm going to lay down and just take a little nippy nap. And everyone else is, like, quoting the office about how they pick a pee corner and, like, use the bathroom right away. And then <clears throat> my boss... Got into an elevator with one of my coworkers, and the doors closed, and they pressed the button, and it didn't move anywhere. And then the doors opened again, and they pressed the button, and then the doors closed again, and they were just standing there. And she's like, you know what? I really have to pee. So the doors opened again. It didn't move, and they both just got off. She went to the bathroom, and then they took the stairs for the rest of the day. And wow. eventually, before the day was over, that elevator had been closed for maintenance. Wow. So it's like you were that close to having to use the bathroom in an elevator. So like it's just constantly on my mind every time I press the button to go to a different floor. So now if I'm going down, I just take the stairs. Because I'm like down is easy. Up is the one where I might like have a heart attack or break a sweat. The buildings at my school seem to cut out any sort of phone signal. Like there's no way you're making a call from inside an elevator at school. And a couple of my friends got, there's a brand new building they just built. But they got stuck in the elevator in the brand new building for two hours. Oh my God. And they couldn't call anyone because there's no fucking signal. But there's a button in the elevator. And that it sends didn't out, work. Oh my God. If that happens, if the button doesn't work, <laughs> I'm cracking that elevator open and I'm fucking just going to try and get out of there. I'm not yeah. going to sit in there and they wait for someone to discover me. They were stuck in there for two hours. I'm not going to be that dude from Hangover 2. Spoilers, if you haven't seen it, the movie's like 10 years old, whatever. So, yeah, <laughs> some good stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to move on into my last one of the show. And this one's <laughs> subject is Happy Haunted Household Part 1 in Aww. parentheses. Please feel free to share on the podcast. I, this sounds cute. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. And it starts out kind of cute because I just looked at it and this is how it starts. Hi, Adam and Robin. Robin and Adam. And more importantly, Linda. Aww. Which is my mom. super cute. That is very, very nice. My name is Anna, pronounced Anna. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually put it in there. So I wonder if this is Anna over in YouTube chat. Oh, because it's like Anna, Anna. Yeah, because we always get it wrong. But this is Anne dash A. So Anna. Uh, also known as Ulri on Discord and Twitch. So it Hello. is. Uh, I'm just going to say Ulri from now on. Uh, and my house is haunted. But it isn't even. But it isn't the super scary type of haunted that ends up made into a horror film. So it's, it's like, more of cohabitation. It's like one of those ghosts where you're like. All right, I guess we're friends now. Which is funny because we were just talking about this between stories and they yeah. mentioned this in the chat. Uh, I have lived in this house all my life and have never been truly terrified nor attacked by anything. But I do have 26 years worth of paranormal experiences to share. And all of them are absolutely find me a Bible 
True. Someone find them a Bible so they can swear on it. I'm pretty sure it has that prayer that I said. That's not an actual prayer. Uh, that might have been when we're in between episode or in between uh, emails. Too oh, long. but it's such a good part. Maybe you'll have to put it in. Or I something. might have to. As a heads up, I'm going to be <laughs> splitting these stories up by just... category so that I don't <laughs> overload the story time episode. So expect more in the future. Yay! I'm super excited. Yeah. Uh, before I go into my first topic, I want to share some information about my house. The house was built on the south side of Chicago in 1905, making it a grand total of 114 years old. There's a lot of history down that road. <laughs> if this is read in 2019, which is hilarious because this was sent, I'm pretty sure, in March. And they're like, if you get around to it in the next, oh, nine months. I'm glad we made it. Uh, we know from looking up its history of previous owners that not even three years after the house was built, the wife of the original owner, named Nina, passed away due to unknown circumstances. The house went through many owners since then until my parents bought it in the early 1980s. Shout out to the early 1980s. Uh, much of the house was still original, though some things have been changed. For example, an additional family room has been added onto the back, a wall being added to support said addition that cuts off the original path of a hallway, and having a servant's staircase being walled off completely, also known as the staircase to nowhere. <laughs> that is so... Creepy. The fact that there's stairs hidden somewhere in your house is Wait, super creepy. So, well, someone posted a video in Facebook before of that that scare that staircase. You might as well call it a staircase. Uh, a Pretty staircase good. that went into nowhere. Yeah. But on the other side, I don't know if it was hidden in the walls. This might be it, though. This actually might be. Yeah, it. and then on the other side was like another room that you could hear people talking through. But the the hallway, the stairway itself was really scary. I don't know. Someone posted it in Facebook like way back in the day, probably. When we first started the Facebook page. Yeah, this might not be the same thing, but still, there is a hidden staircase in this house. The hallways of the first floor are arranged so that you could walk laps around the house by moving from one room to the next. It's a really good visual. There is also a large attic and a dungeon-like unfinished basement. Sorry, not sorry, Robin. Anyway, back to when my parents bought the place in the 80s and into the first category, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the young girl ghost of my house. She has been heard felt, seen, interacted with, and had things moved by. I like to call her our little trickster ghost, and she truly deserves her own category. We know that she doesn't like change to the house as evident of when she has been experienced most often. The first experience my family had with Elizabeth was the night my parents moved in. There's nothing like okay, buying. Okay, so yeah, you move in, and it's like the conjuring. You move in, and immediately it's like, Bad things. Yeah, you buy a brand new house, and it's like, and it's haunted, and bad, bad things, things are starting all to happen. Bad things. <laughs> my mother had a dream in parentheses, and we trust my mom's dreams that she was moving boxes from the moving truck into our front hallway. When she came into the house with her next load, there was a little girl with blonde hair and an old timey white dress standing in the hallway. Nope. The little girl asked, "What are you doing in my house?" No. I don't know how to read that and which tone of voice to use, so I decided to try and use childlike innocence mixed with a bit of creepy. I hope I nailed that. My mom was confused and told her that this was her house, and the girl responded saying, no, this is my house. My mom asked the little girl her name, which is how we learned it is Elizabeth, and then asked her where her mother was, thinking she was a lost child. The girl said that her mother was upstairs and ran up to them. When my mom followed, no one was in the house. That is so creepy. Now, yes, this was a dream my mom had, but this is not the only time Elizabeth made an appearance. My first memorable interaction with Elizabeth was during the winter when I was about 13 years old. I had always known about her and blamed her for small objects being moved about the house or a giggle coming from nowhere. No. But I don't remember having any direct interaction with her before this point. No, kid. Okay, see? Childlike, childlike laughter. Childlike laughter. Disembodied childlike laughter. You got to put disembodied in front of it because that Freaks makes it me like, out. way more accurate. It was winter and living in an old house in the Midwest meant it was cold. At the time, my bed was pushed into a corner of the room with a wall at my head and another at my left-hand side. I normally sleep wrapped up, my, <laughs> wrapped up in my blankets like a burrito, and I had my blankets tucked cozily That's, around me on all sides that night. It's the best way to sleep. It really is, Being especially when up. you steal the blankets from someone else to wrap yourself as a burrito, yep. and they die. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, the blankets on my left side that faced the wall were yanked from under me. Of course, I was startled awake. From across my room, I could hear a little girl giggling, and when I looked, I saw the curtains at my window swaying no, no. as if someone had moved them. 
One thing you should know about growing up with friendly ghosts is that you don't get too startled by these types of things. I told Elizabeth to quit it as I was trying to sleep, tucked myself back in, and went back to sleep. The first time I saw Elizabeth was when I was in my early 20s. Holy shit. At the time, my older sister was flying to Europe and I was having a little freak out. My only sister was flying in an aluminum tube over the Atlantic Ocean and I have anxiety. So the mini freak out was justified. I totally agree with you on that one. Anyway, I was staying up late to track my sister's flight and was told by my parents that having my room light on was annoying them and as they tried to sleep. As a compromise, I took my things downstairs to stay up in our family room. As I went, I turned on lights so that I wouldn't have to walk through the dark because the dark is creepy, ghosts or no. I mean, the night is dark and full of terrors. Wow. Is it though? Is it anymore? She's gone now. Spoilers. After setting my things in our living room, I backtracked and turned off the lights I didn't need. Basically, retracting my original journey, turning off lights this time rather than turning them on. As I reached our kitchen, which is just off our family room, I saw Elizabeth, or rather, part of her. I saw the back of her white 1900s child's dress and the pale white heel of her bare foot run around the corner of our refrigerator no. and down the hall as if I had scared her and she was running away from me. This just makes me feel like this is like a time overlap where you're each other's ghosts. It's the others. Yeah. I jumped and swore as one does when spooked, but after a few moments, I calmed down and explained why I was downstairs so late and that I was sorry that we had startled each other. That's really, really nice. I like dealing with ghosts where it's like, if this is a disembodied spirit of a human being, like, why do you think they wouldn't just be able to talk to you and understand or reason with you because they're a ghost? And just don't antagonize them. Yeah. Because that's just asking for them to be like, oh, yeah, bitch. Oh, well, I can walk through walls and fuck shit up. What's up? <laughs> okay. The most recent sighting of Elizabeth was just over two years ago by the owner of a local roofing and siding company who in no way has any relation to our family or previous knowledge of the spirits in our house. My father had hired them to reside the house, to reside the house, and as they were working, the owner saw a young girl with blonde hair and a white dress watching them work and scowling at them. When he took a break, he asked my grandmother about the little girl in the house. My grandmother told him that she was home alone that day and that there was no child age in the house anymore. He responded that he had guessed as much and told her it must have been a ghost because the girl he saw was standing in the narrow space between the window pane and the curtain, and after he looked away for a moment, she was gone. But the curtain had never moved. He also no, stated that earlier in the project, way. he and his workers got this weird feeling that they were being watched as they replaced the windows. Side note, we were so lucky that he was the chillest contractor ever because apparently, since he works primarily on old houses, stuff like that happens to him all the time. We need contractors to send us their stories because I bet you they have a shit ton. Yeah, I'm sure they see weird. Th and plus, they're left in the houses. They're left in the buildings alone. So I bet weird things happen all the time. Or you discover shit time. behind walls. Oh, man, my head's going oh, a bunch of places yeah. now. All right, getting back to this. Like, oh my gosh, how many people have found bodies behind walls? Oh my God. After the project was completed, we did notice a pickup in paranormal activity in the house. Shadow movement out of the corner of our eyes and unexplained sounds of people moving about, but eventually it calmed down again. Construction always seems to do that. It's because you're like ripping apart this house that they're so attached to, you know? Like anything that changes usually riles up spirits and like that's like the biggest thing that you could possibly do. Well, I'm sure if it was something like The Others where... Um, okay, this movie is like 15 years old at this point. Like, if you haven't watched it, sorry. But it's where it's two different worlds overlapping, right? The, the I've never seen it. I, I'm pretty sure I've told you this before on the podcast. I've never seen it. Okay, we, okay, I'm not going to tell you then because you have to watch it. I'm pretty sure I know what happens because you've already ruined it. Yeah, well, we have to watch it. <laughs> okay. Regarding Elizabeth herself, we aren't entirely sure where she came from. And looking through the incomplete records of our home, our home's history, we haven't been able to find an Elizabeth anywhere. And no, she is not a demon in disguise. If she was, she's doing a really shitty job at it, as my family wasn't religious until I turned two, and now my father is a deacon in the Catholic Church. Wow. My mom teaches Sunday school, and my sister is the director of faith formation at a suburban Catholic parish. So well, you're totally like, Adam, get your prayers right. Shut up. <laughs> Well, this is all I have for you now. I hope you enjoyed the first foray into my world of living with ghosts. There will definitely be more in the future, but since I'm writing these down on my lunch breaks, please give me some time. Love to all from the happy haunted household, Anna. 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 Ulri. 
Thank you so much <laughs> Thank for you sending so much. that in. That was That's very a- long and very well written. There was yeah. literally one word out of place that tripped me up because I'm dumb and do not feel bad about that. So no big deal. That was really, really good, though. And I can't wait to really get the good. rest of those stories. Yeah. I wish you knew that contractor still so you could be like, yo, dog, like send more stories into this, this place because they really want to hear them. But man, if you're living in a house that has a ghost and has had a ghost for that long, it's like you're going to have so many stories. Like I love the cohabitation stories, too. They're so good. So right on. Right on, right on, right on. This last email uh, was sent to us on Facebook from Joshua. I think that's how you pronounce your name. It begins, Savak. Hello, Adam and Robin. I don't know what that means. I don't either. I feel like I should, though. Someone let us know what that means. S-A-V apostrophe A-A-Q. I'm sure we could just type it into Google Translate. You go ahead and read, and I will type it into Google. It's been a while since I sent a story, and I thought it was about time I wrote in with the other stories that I have to tell. Yay. Everyone do that. If you've sent a story before and promised us more, and you haven't delivered, gimme, gimme, gimme. We want them. Hope you enjoy the next few stories. My first uh, sleep paralysis is going to be the first story here. I have plenty of stories about sleep paralysis, and they all seem to be concentrated back home in Puerto Rico, because now that I live in the States, I haven't had any. Savak means good day in Gerudo, which is the race of Ganondorf, the Gerudo that eventually becomes Ganon, the bad guy from The Legend of Zelda. And uh, I'm not ashamed that I didn't know that. I'm just disappointed in myself (laughs) in a way I can't even describe with words, because I love Legend of Zelda. (laughs) But uh, I love the person who wrote this even more now, so I will let you continue. All right. Before I start getting back into it, they say that since they've been in the States, they haven't had any sleep paralysis. And since I've lived here at this house, uh, I don't think I've had any night terrors or bad dreams or anything either. Uh, I know you have said that you've had sleep paralysis. But... I've, I've just had sleep paralysis not very often in my adult life, but nightmares and night terrors have just kind of followed me my whole life. They just become less frequent. So When I lived in Hawaii, I used to have um nightmares night terrors and stuff like that a lot more frequently <laughs> so it's kind of crazy now that you, you just have dreams that i do terrible things and wake up and hold waking non-dream adam accountable for yeah, the well, actions of your brain's if version subconscious of me. you could stop being such a slut your subconscious though not my subconscious my subconscious i fall asleep and i'm like i dreamt that i worked all night and that's that sucks. I get super annoyed about that. And then you fall asleep and you're like, yeah, whore! and you wake up and you're super angry at me. It's because you're a whore. Um, all right. Anyway, I will tell you guys about when I had my first sleep paralysis. Um, so this is back in Puerto Rico. When I was around 15, my dad moved to a little house behind his girlfriend's house. Since my parents were divorced, I used to stay with my dad only on the weekends. One weekend, while me and my dad were at the little house, we decided to take a nap in the afternoon. I feel like that's a bad idea. (laughs) I'm already scared. I slept on the couch and my dad decided to sleep on the floor beside me. Uh, A fan was on. It will be... Hashtag team fan. Two emails this week. I'm so happy. It will be important for later. Anyways, after some time, I woke up. The weird thing was that I noticed I couldn't breathe. Then I thought, let me kick my dad to wake him up, but I couldn't move. I tried screaming and I couldn't speak. I could hear my dad's breathing. I could hear the birds chirping and the neighbor's dog barking and even the fan. With all this happening, I noticed one last thing. My face was facing down on the blanket, so the blanket was covering my face. Meaning that even if I could breathe, I was eventually going to suffocate because I could not move. My biggest fear when I have sleep paralysis is that I won't be able to breathe, which I think is very common. I don't see something typically sitting on my chest, but I'm always like, if I fall back asleep, I'm going to die. That's what I always think because I feel like my breathing is set to manual all of a sudden. Like, you know, if you think about it too much, you feel like you have to control your own breathing. I hope I just trigger that in everyone that's listening right now. But like, I feel like that when I wake up from sleep paralysis where it's like, if I go back to sleep, like I'm just going to suffocate and die. So like, I don't want to go back to sleep when I wake up and I'm in sleep paralysis. When I wake up with the blanket on my face... I kind of freak out like I could have suffocated. But I think for the most part, your body knows to take care of you. Yes. Well, I've learned from a band called Lonely Island that no blankets on pajamas because they can choke you in your sleep. And two words about furniture killing machines. So just saying. That made me panic. I tried to move, but nothing. I was literally thinking that I was going to die until I gave it one last try to move. And bam, I sat up. I looked around scared, and there was my dad still sleeping on the floor. The fan was still on. The dog was still barking. I could still hear faint chirps from the birds. 
Little did I know that that was the beginning of many, many more creepy sleep paralysis to come. Um, The second story is called Chased. This sleep paralysis episode is the one that has always stayed in my head, and it is the weirdest one of them all. One day at my mom's house, I decided to take a nap. Yes, I took a lot of naps. I like that your stories come from naps, but I mean, it's sleep paralysis, so you're going to have to go to sleep at some point. Yeah, but I mean, I think naps, because your mind is still half awake, you're not going into the deep. You don't get the REM sleep. Right. And so your mind is still kind of sort of awake, and I think that might be why um, sleep paralysis is is more common when you're napping, maybe. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. But um, But that sounded so scientific. Thanks. I started dreaming that I was walking in a vineyard. As I was walking down a hill, I noticed a shack to my right. After I noticed the shack, I decided to turn around and head back. I don't know where, though. Then, out of nowhere, this car started revving. When I looked behind me, there was a red pickup truck. Immediately, I sensed danger, so I darted. I heard the truck coming behind me, and then it suddenly came around me, and it blocked my way. In that instance, I turned around and ran in the opposite direction. This is when things get freaky. I ran. I heard something open the door and fall on the ground. Fall on the ground. That's kind of freaking creepy. Like, imagine just the door of the truck opening, and something flops out, and it slithers on the ground and fucking chases you. Wow, you're really going into detail with what you think is about to happen. Um, And as soon as it hit the ground, it started chasing me. How did I know? I could hear the footsteps behind me. I kid you not, the sound of the steps were so real. Just think about a time you played it and you had a friend chase you. Is it you played it or you like played tag. tag? Okay. But I mean, who's it? Okay, maybe I got in it. Puerto Rico is different. Um, or just different regions, right on. Yeah. Those same footsteps was what I heard. It was so vivid. I tried to run as fast as possible, but I could hear those steps behind me grow louder and louder until whatever it was caught me. I felt those hands wrap around me. Oh, my God. In that moment, I woke up. However, the weird thing was that when the thing caught me and I woke up, it was as if water was slowly enveloping my body. I hope I'm explaining that well. It's been something that I have never been able to compare anything with. And when the bubble of water closed, my paralysis kicked in. The paralysis did not last much since I already knew how to get out of sleep paralysis pretty quickly. Nonetheless, it was creepiest of all. That would be all. I will send other stories later on. Since I know you guys are running a little short on stories, I really do enjoy hearing you guys. It is nice to have something to listen to while I'm working or working out. I hope to one day meet you guys. Oh, and let me tell you that I was so excited when I heard you guys read my story. I immediately texted my friend so she could listen to that episode. Also, I do apologize if I'm all over the place with my writing. (laughs) You're fine. Thank you guys for everything. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for sending that in. I really, I totally empathize with waking up out of a dream and having it affect you in your waking world because I've had it happen to me where I've woken up and immediately thought like, I think I'm about to get sleep paralysis and like, I better move or I'm going to get sleep paralysis and then I get sleep paralysis. And I'm just like, well, son of a bitch. It is very disturbing and it's just one of the worst things that can happen to you, especially if you're waking up from a really creepy nightmare. It's one thing to wake up from like a dream that didn't connect to it, but if they connect and then you wake up and you fall into sleep paralysis, like you feel like something carried out of your dream. At least that's how I've always felt. So super creepy. It kind of triggered me a little bit. Not Freddy Krueger type of stuff. This is more adult stuff. I've never had like Freddy catch me in a dream and then get sleep paralysis. I've just had like horrible nightmares about Freddy Krueger like my entire childhood growing up so yeah good stuff thank you so much for sending that and we really appreciate it what about you I haven't had uh, well okay I had one instance of sleep paralysis that was more like a night terror because I couldn't move and my boyfriend at the time was right there and I it's one of those things where I tried to scream and nothing was coming out and it just freaks me out um I haven't had them since I was a lot younger like 1920 um, you were 19 you were alive in 1920 that's so <laughs> long ago or maybe like 24 no not even 24 23 i haven't had him in a really really long time now that i'm turning 30 i'm like oh man that was a long time ago but uh, in hawaii i used to have him a lot more often um, and it definitely happened in certain places i lived in more so than others and i don't know if it's because of the environment and if maybe sounds were different, temperature-wise it was different, I don't know. But I don't think, at least in your case, it's related to stress because I feel like you're more stressed now I'm than you much were in more your press because you have way much more on your plate, like podcast, work, school, 
versus before it was just kind of like work and then ah, we'll figure out the rest later type of thing you yeah. know what i mean so well yeah back in the day i was like working video games living the life <laughs> hashtag dream life i used to work at gamestop too so it was like video games at work video games at home life is video games it's great <laughs> that's just what it's like when you work at gamestop so. <laughs> but now i'm like oh man life is stressful <laughs> It's funny. So I just wanted to thank everyone who sent us emails this week. Thank you so much. If you would like to do so, please go to scarish.com and click contact us. Fill out that form and it comes directly to us. You can also just email us yourself. The email address is storytime at scarish.com. You can go to facebook.com slash scarish podcast and message us at scarish pod is our Twitter at scarish podcast is our Instagram. Those are all the different ways you can message us. If you'd like to join some of the more active communities, you can. You don't have to uh, share your story. You can just join in for memes or funny stories or share what you're watching on TV or books you're reading or anything like that. Uh, The most fun one and the easiest accessible one is a tie between the Scary Spooky Friends group, which is on Facebook.com slash Scary Podcast, and our Discord server, which the easiest way to find that is to go to scaryish.com. On the right-hand side, if you scroll down, you'll see all these social media buttons. Find the one that says Discord. Click on it, and you have joined us. It is that simple. Mm -hmm. We have like 230 members, I think, right now in the Discord. Quite a few. Not everyone is active, but there's a decent amount of people that are active where there's always conversation going on, and it's a really fun time. I just love all the memes. The There's memes are so great. Memes. We have spooky memes and we have not so spooky memes. Well, and memes. then we have Dad Joe Corner. We have Dad Joe Corner. We have a Game of Thrones channel. And the fucking Game of Thrones memes are memes are so, so good. I'm not going to say anything about what they are because they're definitely spoiler heavy. But they're just so funny. So yeah. that said, any time that anyone wants to reach out to us, even if you don't want to share a story, you just want to like tell us a story or look to us for feedback, feel free to do so. We have people every week that reach out to us and say like, hey, I don't want this shared on the show. I just wanted to talk to someone about it because I don't want to feel like I'm crazy. We are here for that, and we want you to know that we encourage you to do it. I think a lot of people feel like you're bothering us. You are absolutely not bothering us. What bothers me is having to go to work at a job I don't truly love with my heart and soul just to trade hours of my day for dollars in my pocket. What doesn't bother me is a stranger who is interested in the same things I am or just needing to talk to another human being, reaching out and saying, hey, can I talk to you? The answer is absolutely yes, always. So uh, we just wanted to reinforce that because we truly mean it. And uh, Robin, I know a lot of folks say like, how can I donate to you guys if I want to give like a dollar? Uh, how can they do so? Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash scaryish podcast. That is where we have tier donations, I suppose. And those are every month. And each tier has its own different perks, bonuses, things like that. And the higher you get, you collect all the perks from the previous tiers plus the new perks from the tier yes. that you've chosen. And all the physical tiers I shop for design or like get printed i hand make i hand package we don't go through like a shipping company or or anything like that sometimes my sister will help me stuff envelopes but i seriously this is all done out of our home like everything is made with our hearts and hands <laughs> and um then we have coffee ko-fi.com slash scariest podcast and that is one-time donations all those donations go to helping us upgrade our studio setup. So if you've watched our YouTube videos from the beginning and followed along with us, you see that our quality has definitely gotten a lot better. We started out with like a really cheap GoPro and we started at the bottom. Now we're here oh, is what she's trying wow. to say. So it's not the best <laughs> it could ever be, but it's pretty damn good considering that we did start with a GoPro, like Robin said, which was duct taped to a tripod. And uh, it's really nice that you folks have donated to us in the name of upgrading the studio. And we, we listed the things that we we're going to purchase. And yep. we've been able to purchase those things because of you folks. And it's uh, really amazing. And we, we appreciate it. We truly do. If you go to our website, scaryish.com, please take a look around. There's a whole bunch of different things that we post on there. And uh, our shop, all the items that we have for sale are on there. So if you check out our shop, it'll take you to either Teespring or Streamlabs or Etsy, wherever it is that you're looking for goodies. So take a look. Please support us. Thank you. Yep. And I think that's just about everything that we have for story time number 66. I think we're all excited that we're three away from the sex number again. So wow, pretty awesome. But uh, that's all we have for tonight. So Robin, why don't you go ahead and sign us out? Keep on creeping on and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.